if you bias some of those processes, you can sort of bias what comes out of the crypt cryptography pro the encryption process. And you can get to a stage where you could actually start to attack that and you can see kind of things leaking out and then you, you work your way backwards. So there's different types of mathematics that are used in it. You do a computation involving the data you want to encrypt and a secret of some kind. And either you need the same secret to decrypt it, and that's symmetric cryptography, or you can have a different key to decrypt it, and that's asymmetrical public key cryptography, where you have one key that you can use to encrypt stuff which you might make public, and then you have a private key that you can then use to decrypt stuff, and you, so you can't decrypt using the public key. All banks have similar numbers when you want to send them your credit card details. This is not a secret number. In fact, your computer will download this number when it wants to send your credit card details. So you can put your public key out there, other people can encrypt messages and send them to you, and you're the only person with the private key, so you're the only person that can decrypt them. There's the computations that are actually carried out to encrypt and decrypt, and that's the mathematics. And as I understand it, that's not been broken yet. The mathematics is still valid. But there are other pieces there that can be attacked. So you can attack the keys. You can try and get the keys in some, some fashion, and that will allow you to decrypt the messages. Um, you can try and attack the people in the system. So you can hold a cost to someone's head and say, or you know, their wife's head or something, and say, right, give me the keys, otherwise you know, somebody gets it. But you can attack the, um, the standards bodies that define how these mathematical techniques are turned into algorithms that actually make a crypto system. And if you can weaken the way that that standardization, the, the, the standards that come out of that, if you can weaken those, then you can kind of leave holes in it that you know how to exploit. Um, you can do things where you weaken specific components used in systems built around these mathematical techniques. So the mathematics, as far as we know, is okay, but there's so many other bits around it you need. So is this a bit like, I've got 17 locks on my front door, but he's thrown in the window? Yeah, so you go in the window or you pull the wall down. You can find other ways in. Correctly implementing the mathematics in a piece of computer code is actually quite hard to do because it can be quite hard to write that code so you're not leaking information that you don't intend to. There are ways that information can leak out of this process which lets you attack and get back to the source message, which is really what you want to do. Like a showmanship of a magician where he's already done the trick before you even get to the bit where it looks like he's doing the trick. You know, the sleight of hand thing is a bit more maybe what they're doing with the standards committees of already getting the weakness in right at the start or getting the weakness into a particular implementation that then becomes popularly used. That's believed to be a correct implementation. People use it as if it's a correct implementation, but there's this underlying weakness that you're aware of. You can attack that weakness, so you kind of leave holes for you to get some leverage later. Is there any way to make it play itself? No, classically in the film War Games. Yes, number of players, zero. There was that back door where you could play tic-tac-toe on the NORAD nuclear simulator computer. And that's a sort of a thing that was left behind. You can do similar things um, that are perhaps less obvious, um, you know, biasing a random number generator to generate in a particular way or picking one that you know to be biased. When they're implemented correctly, these systems are strong, but it's quite hard to implement them absolutely correctly. Essentially, what you're doing when you encrypt something is you're taking something you know, you're turning it into something that just looks like noise, and just looks like junk. And what you want is to have no easy way for somebody to analyse that noise and kind of reverse back to what, what the original message was. If you never use a network, you can't be traced through that network. Use trusted implementations of strong encryption where you can that have been you know, probably open source implementations so that they've been well examined by experts and use them carefully following all the guidelines, which typically means there is actually a kind of a human cost involved because it's typically more awkward than not using them. Right? You're going to have to take some time to learn how to use them. A lot of them are not very easy to use and so on. So you just kind of have to put up with that though if you really care. It sort of depends on how much you care. There's always a kind of cost trade-off here of, how much do you really care and how much are you willing to put in to make sure that that's the case. So you can protect yourself against uh, you know, an idle observer pretty easily. Um, protecting yourself 100% against the NSA is going to be a lot more effort. From my own point of view, I use you know, fairly standard mechanisms to protect things like access to my bank details and retailing online and so on, where I'm not really that bothered if somebody in the NSA can tell you know, that, because they can probably find that out through any number of means that they really cared to. I just, I probably believe they don't really care to. On the other hand, there may be some things where I do care a bit more, and so I would think about doing that more. Or I might just think about not transmitting it over the internet and doing it through some other means, like meeting face-to-face -face or sending, you know, letter. sending letters and things like that. But again, those can be intercepted. All of these kind of communication methods can be intercepted at some level, at different levels of the cost, and you know, the trade-off there becomes complex. 
I guess mathematics is trustworthy, I suppose, um, when you try and turn it into a working system. It does lots of pitfalls. And of course, you can never be quite sure, right? Maybe they did break their maths. Yeah, who knows? Maybe they've just not admitted that. Maybe the NSA have got a quantum computer stash somewhere. Exactly. Right. It could be. Who knows? <laughs> These are secret organisations. Type a key and it sends some numbers and the same letter comes out the other side. But there needs to be a standard. When we rewrite the blocks over and over again, it erases all trace of the data. But oh dear, our flash drives, let's remember what they do. 